to my YouTube channel. It is bright and early on Wednesday morning today and I'm very excited because my mum and I are about to go to a lavender farm which I'm so looking forward to. I haven't been to a lavender farm for years and it will make a lovely day out. The sun is shining and I can't wait to get going but we've bought tickets to go and we've got the earliest slot so we better get a move on. I'll bring you along as always. So here we are at the Lavender Farm. I'm so excited Me to too. be here. It's lovely. It is. It feels like a little breath of Provence in it your does. Shirt. It does. <laughs> the sun's gone in a bit, but there's still a bit of blue sky. Yeah. So yeah, we're hopeful. It won't rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take my straw hat off if it does. <laughs> no dark glasses today. No. Anyway. Yeah. But um, we're about to enter the little lavender maze mm, Can't here. wait. The scent is lovely. It is. It smells yeah. gorgeous. And this is such a nice place. It's currently pretty empty, which is amazing. Yes, yes. And so we feel like we have it to ourselves, but there's a pretty tea room. It's lovely. Yes. It's beautiful. So we've now just arrived in Moulton. We had the best time at the Lavender it Farm. It was wonderful. Didn't we? It really it was. It was really so much fun. And we've come to Moulton for lunch. We're going to try a place called the New Moulton, 
which is meant to be very nice. I'm yeah. quite hungry. Are you? I am, but wasn't wasn't the lavender farm lovely? It really was. We had a fabulous time, and the sun came out after us saying we wouldn't need dark glasses. We did. <laughs> yes, the it sun's really lovely. come out, which is lovely. And we bought uh, we bought a few goodies from yeah. the shop, which I'll show you once we're home. But yeah, it was really special. Another wonderful end of summer activity. It was. Yeah. It was lovely and it wasn't too busy. It was so different from the one when we lived in Kingston. Yeah, Mayfield. I think it was called yeah, Mayfield. Mayfield Flower farm yeah. lavender farm yeah we used it was to, lovely we, too but it yes. was so busy we got busier we first went there years yeah. ago when i lived in kingston but then sort of instagram happened and since then it was so busy yeah and all all of them near london are like that so finding one here that was still a bit unspoilt yes that was really special and i love lavender i love the scent of it so we we bought a few goodies as well which was fabulous yeah but i'm quite peckish yeah. now and Let's i'm excited find a place to, to eat yeah. that we can get in yes i hope yeah. so and then we'll explore molten lovely we're in the new Moulton. We've got a lovely table in their little library. Beautiful. Yes, look at the shelves. <laughs> We had an amazing day out, really fabulous, sitting, having a cup of tea and going through my spoils of the day because we did a bit of shopping. It was so much fun. I don't think we've had a proper mother-daughter day out, having lunch out together, doing some shopping together for such a long time. So it really felt special to be able to enjoy doing that together and discovering somewhere new. We absolutely loved Moulton. It's such a great market town. There were so many really good shops. The bookshop was brilliant. It's a charming little bookshop there. And it's a bit of a general shop too. So they had some homeware products and stationery. And we did buy a few things that I'll, I'll show you. We went antique shopping as well. There's great little antique places. And I found some good things there, which I'll show you too in a minute. 
we just had a really fabulous day. I feel um, so happy and so grateful to have, su to have had such a lovely day, but I'll show you what we got. So starting at the beginning of the day, we did come away with some fresh lavender from the Yorkshire Lavender Farm, which was so much fun. I absolutely loved it there. These smell heavenly, I've got three bunches and it's just going to remind us of our lovely morning now which will be nice and we'll let these dry out as well but I'll pop those in a bar in a vase really soon and I got just a few other goodies from Yorkshire Lavender, picked up some culinary lavender to use in baking. I absolutely love making lavender shortbread and things like that, so it was good to pick up a little sachet of that. And then I got a big bag of already dried lavender, which I'm not going to open because I don't want this going everywhere just yet. And I'm really looking forward to using this to make little lavender pouches and sachets to go in my wardrobe and in my chest of drawers because it's always good to have moss deterrents in old houses and I've got a lot of woolly jumpers and I just thought it'd be a fun little project to make in the start of autumn because I always feel extra crafty then. <laughs> I think it's that back to school feeling so I thought this would be a fun project for the beginning of September hopefully so I've got that all ready which will be fab. What shall I show you next? I'll show you the books <laughs> that we got um yes because I found some that I really wanted in the bookshop in Moulton. So the bookshop was called Kemp's Books I don't know if you can see the name on the bag, it's a bit faint. But you know how I've been wanting the new Elizabeth Jane Howard set of her Cazalet Chronicles? And I've been looking for them and I could have just ordered them online, but I have been looking for them in bookshops and I've only tended to see the first one or something, not all five. But in the bookshop there. It's all got a bit bent in the bag. Oh well. Um, in the bookshop there they had all five of them. So I'm so happy. These are the editions with the Luke Edward Hall covers that I think look fantastic. They come with a little bookmark in each one too. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So it was great to get the bookmark. So yes, I got five, all five in the series, which I'm really thrilled with. I love his artwork, so it's really great to have this set. It's been published by Pam Macmillan, and I'm so happy to have found them all. And we had such a special day. There's that one. We had such a special day. It was really nice to get a set of books that I really love. And I'll always remember that first trip to Moulton when I re uh, when I read these and reread these, as I know I will, and to have a special set of them. But I'll also always remember where I got them from and the happy memories attached. To that so I think that's really nice when you can buy books that you love and know that you also have really happy memories of when you bought those books so super thrilled to get those just pop them over there for now flatten out that corner of the cover got, <laughs> got slightly bent <laughs> and then got a few more books <laughs> I picked up three that I thought sounded really interesting and two of these I hadn't heard of before so it was so great to be back browsing in a bookshop because otherwise I wouldn't have come across these books. Two of these I just picked up through browsing 
which is great. And that's this one, The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Have a look at it there. I love the cover. I think that's really gorgeous. And it says, I just bought this based on the blurb because I thought it sounded really good. It says, when Alicia discovers a crumpled reading list tucked into a tattered library book, it sparks an extraordinary journey. From timeless stories of love and friendship to an epic journey across the Pacific Ocean with a boy and a tiger in a boat, the list opens a gateway to new and wonderful worlds just when Alicia needs an escape from her troubles at home. And when widower Mukesh arrives at the library, desperate to connect with his bookworm granddaughter, Alicia introduces him to the magic of the reading list. An anxious teenager and a lonely grandfather forming an unlikely book club of two. Inspiring and heartwarming, the reading list is a love letter to storytelling. It's power to transport us, connect us, and remind us that a new beginning is only a page away. So that just really intrigued me. It sounds like it's a book for book lovers, and I'm a real sucker for that type of book. That definitely drew me in with that synopsis. So I'm hoping it will be really good. And then I picked up this book, which I hadn't heard of, but just through browsing. And see the cover. I was really drawn to that cover. And it's called The Strays of Paris by Jane Smiley. And this sounded really good too. It says, Paris is a spirited young racehorse living in a stable in the French countryside. That is until one afternoon when she pushes open the gate of her stall and travelling through the night, arrives quite by chance in the dazzling streets of Paris. And then she meets some other animals, like a short-haired pointer named Frida, and an opinionated raven, and some irrepressible ducks, apparently, but also a young boy, Etienne. And again, it says, as the cold weather of Christmas nears, the unlikeliest, the unlikeliest of friendships bloom among the strays of Paris. So this sounds like it's another quite heartwarming read, hopefully, and a bit of a different book, putting animals really as main characters. So I'm looking forward to reading this one too, and it sounds like it might be hopefully a nice autumnal read in the lead up to Christmas. So I'm saving it for that. And then this is a book I've heard a lot about. You can see the gorgeous cover. And it's called Walking the Invisible, Following in the Bronte's Footsteps by Michael Stewart. I actually was um, given an audiobook of this to listen to, but I actually find it very hard to listen to non-fiction books on audio because I really then just have to concentrate a lot harder on listening. And that means that I have to be doing some kind of activity that doesn't really take my brain too much and normally when I listen to audiobooks I'm doing like a hundred other things at the same time which is why I really like to reread books by listening to them on audio. I rarely listen to an audiobook unless I've actually already read it. So I'm much more interested in actually reading this than listening to it. So I picked it up and it sounds um, very good as well. It says, in his journey to get closer to the Brontes, award-winning author Michael Stewart began walking the historic paths they trod while writing their most famous works. From Liverpool to Scarborough, across wild, windy and often unforgiving scenery, he discovered echoes of the siblings' novels. And it's described as vivid and evocative writing to this. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. This will be fabulous. So those are the books that I got from the bookshop, but I got a few other things as well. I've got a couple little packets in here too. You know I'm a sucker for stationery and I do just have that 
back to school feeling. It feels like it's just hovering around the corner. And so I couldn't resist picking up a few little essentials. I was really thrilled to see that they had um, Coeco ink cartridges. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. One of my very favorite fountain pens that I use is by um, Kaweco and I'm almost out of ink. So I restocked, which I'm very, very pleased about. And the bookshop had an amazing selection of colors. So I was able to get quite a few different colors. I mainly love blue. I mainly always use blue ink. So I got some sort of classic, navy, and then a bit more of a grade blue, almost a kind of French gray blue. And then I got some fun colors, some purple, and then some autumnal colors that I thought would be fun. So pumpkin, forest green, and brown. So, I was really pleased to stumble on those. Sorry, my battery died there. <laughs> I've been using it a lot today, my camera, so it has actually held up pretty well. But anyway, I was really thrilled that the bookshop also stocked a lot of Cambridge imprint notebooks and little notelets, and I picked up these notelets, which I think look so pretty. I love the different colours. They're just gorgeous. And I actually find these quite useful for writing out little recipes, like as little recipe cards, as well as writing notes for friends, that sort of thing. So I got those. And then I was really thrilled that Kemp's Books also stocked Elizabeth Harbour ornaments. If you've watched my Christmas tree decorating videos, if you watched my Easter tree decorating video, then you'll know how much I love her ornaments and I've always ordered them from her. But this bookshop in Moulton actually stocks quite a lot of her ornaments and she's done some new ones that I just couldn't resist, like this gorgeous little shell lady. How sweet is she? Let me see if you can see that just adorable and I love this one with the turret and this little jug with flowers I really couldn't resist oh let's focus that just so sweet and then the little sailor boy in his rowboat with the little cat oh can't get it to focus there you go and then this little lady <laughs> with a woman's best friend too <laughs> um so i was so thrilled to find those as well really really pleased and then one more thing <laughs> this was what mum picked up actually she uh, was very excited to see this i'll show you like i said there were quite a few homeware things as well and my mum loves maison cash we've got some bowls by them already but we've both been wanting to get more of their sort of pretty colored bowls and they had quite a few of them at Kemp's Books. And my mum just fell in love with this one, with the pretty little woodland scene. I don't know if you can see the hedgehog, but it's just so sweet. And I saw this and said, this will be perfect for, my, for when we make our apple cake in September, when the apples really start to come, or maybe apple pie. I mean, this just screams apple pie to me too. So definitely going to be using it for that. So yes, that was amazing. I can't recommend Kemp's books enough. <laughs> if you like this sort of thing too, 
And then I'll show you what we got in the little antique shop. There were lots of antique shops in the shambles area. And I was so thrilled. Mum spotted this for me. And it's a vintage Laura Ashley skirt. Hold on, let me just get these things out a moment. And then I can show you the fabric. I love Laura Ashley, especially the old classic floral prints. So I was so delighted to get this skirt and that was such a great spot of my mum. So thank you, mum. <laughs> yeah, I was really, really thrilled about that. And then I spotted this. And you'll see why I couldn't resist it. So a gorgeous little teacup. I'll get the saucer. How sweet is that? I just can't wait to use it and to take pictures with it. And then I got the little matching plate as well. So pretty. So I felt it did really, really well. That was amazing. And then the final thing that we got is we went to this lovely French patisserie in I think it was called Talbot Yard which had all of these great little cafes and coffee shops it was such a fun area of Moulton and we went to um Florian Poirot <laughs> great last name <laughs> and got some delicious macaroons so oh, I'm going to break the seal for you <laughs> so you can see them. Those just look so scrummy. <laughs> so our fun is extending a little bit um, throughout the week, <laughs> throughout the rest of the week, as we'll get to enjoy these. So mum and I picked out some of our favourite flavours and I can't wait to have a little nibble later tonight maybe with my chamomile tea <laughs> and a macaroon that will be perfect. So that was all of the shopping we did, I think we did do very well but it was such a great place to do a bit of shopping, absolutely fabulous and yeah we had the best time and we didn't even cover half the places, we just didn't have time and we really want to go back very soon because there were so many shops that looked amazing that we didn't get a chance to go into and there were lots of little coffee shops that mum especially really wanted to try because you know she loves coffee and she doesn't really get enough of it around me I think. <laughs> um, and she got very excited because when we arrived there we stepped out of the car and she smelt freshly roasted coffee beans in the air and that got her very excited. So she wants to try out more of the coffee shops there too. But yeah, we had the best time. Thank you so much for coming along with us. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you've had a wonderful week and I hope you have a fantastic weekend ahead. Let me know what you're up to and do give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up over here. But I'll see you again next Tuesday with another video. Goodbye.